Okay. Good to go? Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Warren Pearson at the Field Extension Education Lab, and today we're looking at a cover crop interseeding demo that was planted on June 4th when the corn was about V4. And so this demo is actually replicated research at the research farms across the state. And so this is just to see what happens and uh, they were uh, testing out their machine and making sure it worked before they actually went to the research farms with it. And so right here we have daikon radishes, tillage radishes, and so it's a little bit sporadic, um, but I'll go ahead and pull up one of these plants and actually out within the plots, this is what the daikon radishes look like. And uh, they're not quite as big as the ones on the ends. They're not quite as big as they will get to be, uh, but they're producing quite a bit of root growth at this point. And so uh, we have six different treatments out here and we can look at each one of those, but one of the concepts with this is to produce forage for livestock. And so after harvest, you can let uh, cattle graze and feed on these two additional forage and spread out uh, the grazing season. Other reasons to do this include uh, taking up nutrients later in the season. So after we harvest, the cover crop should continue to grow unless we have a killing frost that would affect uh, the different species that we have out here. And they'll continue to grow and provide other benefits like soil structure, uh, other things like that too. So why doesn't everybody do this? So this concept isn't proven yet. Uh, a lot of people are working on it, uh, but cover crops can provide a lot of benefits to growers. So basically they can, winter cereal rye has been shown to suppress weeds before soybeans and it takes up excess nitrate and so we don't lose the nitrogen to uh, the groundwater and um, it can build soil structure as well. So there's lots of benefits, but there's additional costs incurred. So you have to go out and buy the seed to do that and then um, applying the seed. And so a lot of times in Iowa, uh, people are broadcasting into a standing crop late in the year, but then you have to rely on rain to basically work that into the soil. So in dry years, we don't have very good growth of cover crops if they don't get germinated. And uh, oftentimes the best way is to drill it, but by the time you get harvested, it may be too late for the cover crop to start growing. So those are some of the challenges. Um, and that's one of the reasons why they're looking at interseeding early on. And so they're hoping that we can get the cover crop established and then it can almost be not quite dormant, but not act like a weed necessarily to the crop. That's one of the hopes, but that's why the research is going on to see if it has a negative effect on yield. And then hopefully once it harvests, once harvest occurs, uh, the cover crops can basically take over and start growing more. So that's one of the goals. Um, and that's why the research is going on to basically see if it's a fit and if it can work out well in the future. Yeah, so let's go check out one of those big ones on the end. So let's see if I can... Oh. Oh. All right, so this is a big daikon radish. You'll actually see these in grocery stores too. I wouldn't want to eat this because we applied herbicides, but uh, people do eat these too. It's massive. Yeah, and so I, I would expect this one to continue growing. Um, I think that I don't have a lot of experience with daikon radishes, to be honest, um, but I think they can get bigger than this, is what I've been told. So, what, how big is this thing? I think this is probably a foot to 15 inches long here, all the way from the top to bottom, it's probably close to two feet. Okay, so this this is the comparison. One that was on the end, this is actually within the plot. And so hopefully this one would continue growing after harvest. I mean, it's, it's, it's growing right now, but it'll get a lot more sunlight once harvest is complete. And 
this is what you would see in a non-competition situation. So this wouldn't be fair if we were just saying, oh, look at how big this one is. We grabbed it out of the end row where it's actually getting a bunch of sunlight and nutrients. It doesn't have the crop competing with it. If you have any questions about cover crops or the research going on at Iowa State, check out the link in the description. Yeah! All right.